Thanks for joining me today on Tuesday Teaching Tips. It's episode 186. And today we're talking about how, how preaching builds the Christian community. How preaching builds the Christian community. So as we preach and teach to a group of people, it's part of the way that God can build up that community, how it can be edified as a group, not just as individuals. And we talked about edification recently, but we're going to talk about it a bit more today, inspired by some more comments from a book I've been reading courtesy of Harry Hardy. Thanks for giving me this book. For those of you watching the video, here it is. Dr. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones book, Preaching and Preachers, written back in, I think, the 60s. Let me just flip to the contents or the information page here. Where are we? Copyright 1971. I think he was writing it in the 60s, I guess, published early 1970s. He was coming to the end of a very long and distinguished preaching career. And he's writing some summary summaries of his thoughts about the significance of preaching and teaching. And in this particular chapter, he's dealing with the issue that some people say that can't you learn as much individually as you can corporately? Is there a place even for preaching and teaching to groups when you can learn on your own? So we're going to look at that today. He says this on page 42. Cannot all you want to be done equally well by reading, reading books and journals? Cannot it be done by television or radio? And today we'd add blogs, podcasts, YouTube, other online resources. Can't we learn just as well from them as we can together in a corporate preaching context? In fact, do we even need preaching if we've got all these resources? And let's face it, you and I have right now the most incredible resources available to us as individuals, more than the humankind has ever had. We can find almost anything we want, almost any time of day or night, and consume it relatively cheaply, if not for free, by and large. So isn't that replacing uh, preaching and teaching? So undoubtedly there's a lot of good value out there online and in books and journals and on blogs. And I, I read many blogs myself. I listen to podcasts. I like to listen to Tim Keller's sermons. I watch many things on YouTube, like The Bible Project, um, I listen to podcasts by Worship Central, which give me good insights about worship, and also uh, Resound uh, put out a podcast, which I really like. There's lots out there that's really good and valuable and certainly aids the development of my faith, the maturing of my faith, the strengthening of my faith and my Christian life as I, as I practice discipleship. So there's certainly truth in that. And I think the argument is over whether, therefore, do we need preaching? in a corporate sense? Do we need teaching in a corporate sense? Does, do, 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 we, do the things that we can learn individually, do they supplant the need for corporate experience of preaching and teaching, or do they supplement? That's the big question, I think. So Lloyd-Jones goes on to say this. Let me read you a slightly longer paragraph, but I think it's helpful. I suggest, he says, that the result of this purely individual learning is a disappointing one. And I think I can give the reasons for this. The first is that this is a wrong approach because it is too individualistic. The man or woman sits on his own reading his book. That is too purely intellectual in its approach. It is a matter of intellectual interest. Another thing, which I find very difficult to put into words, but which to me is most important, is that the man himself is too much in control. What I mean is that if you do not agree with the book, you put it down. If you do not like what you're hearing on the television, you switch it off. You are an isolated individual and you are in control of the situation. Or to put it more positively, the whole approach lacks the vital element of church. Interesting couple of points he makes there. And it's the second point that resonates with me personally the most. The idea of 
of being in danger of being too selective when you are pursuing individual learning. Every, if I'm watching, a, listening to a podcast and it doesn't grab me in the first 20 or 30 seconds, I, I go on to another one. I, I delete it or I just don't listen to it. Same thing with a YouTube video. I don't know about you, but I have a tolerance of about 20, 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds to a minute. In fact, I was watching a, a video this morning and I felt that the presenter was waffling for the first 45 seconds and I almost uh, skipped it. I gave it to 60 seconds and I thought, actually, maybe it is worth watching. And it was, but I have a short tolerance for, uh, for, the, for something not grabbing me not seeming relevant or perhaps I just don't like it and there's a danger there that I'll only follow what I like which will reinforce what I already believe and like and that can be a dangerous thing because I may not be exposed to ideas that challenge me and ultimately can help me grow. So there's some thoughts uh, uh, there that I think are important. When I'm in my seat on a Sunday and someone else is preaching and teaching, I'm almost sort of trapped in my seat. I mean, unless I'm going to be very rude if I don't like something and just walk out, or if I'm bored, walk out, or, or just leave, or, or, or walk into another room, or, or put my headphones on and listen to something else, which I don't recommend. I, I am trapped, and in, a good, in some senses, it's a good thing to be trapped every now and again, and make ourselves listen to something we might not always agree with or like. And here I'm not talking about the way that something's presented. Sometimes that is a problem, I know, and, and, and that we can cause that problem as preachers and teachers, but let's not, we're not talking here about the, the style, we're talking about the substance, the kinds of things that are talked about. If someone is preaching a point and teaching a point from a scripture that I don't like, or I don't fully understand, or at this point I don't agree with, but I'm, I am challenged to let my, down my defences to listen. I am challenged in that context to stick around and listen long enough to where, well, I might understand it, and or if I do understand it but don't like it, I might grow to appreciate it. Being stuck somewhere can help us to appreciate it. I'll tell you a little story on a diff slightly different topic. I grew up um, listening to and performing classical music, and I still love that medium today. But along with that, I'm sorry, sad to say, I did um, develop quite a snobbery towards pop music. I tended to think of pop musicians as not real musicians. If they were real musicians, they'd be classical musicians. So I had this prejudice against pop music. Well, when I joined um, the church in London that I joined back in 1984, in that church were a number of professional pop musicians. They had uh, written disco music and similar. They were in a group called Heatwave, who were very popular in the late 70s, perhaps into the early 80s, and did actually write some great music. I, I thought, well, wonderful, we've got some pop musicians in the church, that's great, but I still wasn't going to mm, let myself think of them as proper musicians, until one day, one of them invited me to a recording session in a studio, rehearsal and recordings. And I went along just out of curiosity as to how studio sessions worked. Of course, once I was there, I was kind of trapped there. This would be about 1985, I would think. I spent, I think, half a day in that recording studio. It would, but it would have been rude of me to leave. I'd been invited by these actually quite famous people. Once in the studio, as I listened to them rehearse, as I listened to them work on the harmonies, as I listened to them talk about the shape of the songs, as I, lis as I listened to them actually rehearse and then perform and record, I thought, these are real musicians. Several of them couldn't read music, but they had a tremendous ear and their training had equipped them to be superb musicians. And I grew to not only like their music a lot more, and I have, I have the albums, but also to change my prejudice and think, ah, I, I need to change my attitude and my belief about this. And it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been trapped in that studio for long enough had to have my thinking changed. And there's something about that in corporate preaching and teaching. As we're sitting there on a Wednesday night, a Friday night, a Sunday morning, whatever it is, and someone's speaking for 20, 30, 40 minutes, you and I have the opportunity to have our thinking improved, changed, developed, and then our lives can change. And there's something there about that. Now, as preachers and teachers, we need to use that time wisely and be respectful of the time and effort that people are putting in to be there and of the fact that they may not even like it. 
And so we need to give them our best. And that's what a lot of my, a lot of my uh, podcasts and YouTube videos are about on Tuesday Teaching Tips, is equipping us so that we can give our congregation the best we possibly can but let's not lose the sense of inspiration. And this, this recording today is more about inspiring us to believe in preaching and in the value of corporate, the corporate setting of preaching, more than it is about anything instructional, at least today. It's really important to learn together because we get challenged differently. Because we don't have to accept what we're hearing, but we do need to engage with it. And that in itself can be useful. Even if it doesn't change our mind, it can help us with uh, developing our thinking. We do... We do uh, a lot of good to ourselves and our spirit and our, our church when we wrestle with things in a community rather than as isolated individuals. Wrestling with biblical teaching and spiritual issues in community is a far healthier context in which to do all that rather than simply on our own as an isolated individual in our own heads. There's nothing wrong with personal reflection and thinking. It's just that that on its own is inadequate for us to change and grow. If Jesus thought it was uh, enough to do it individually, he'd have just done individual teaching, but he clearly did not. So what I'd like to know from you is, how do you, how do you view the value of the corporate nature of learning? What do you see as the particular value of corporate learning as opposed to individual learning? And do you have any comments on what I'm saying today? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm over-egging the pudding, as they say? And in fact, that individual learning has more uh, value in it than I think. I think there is some, for sure, but do I, am I over-exaggerating? I'd like to know what you think. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be reflecting on the year and giving us some ways to think about our preaching for 2019 and then prepare for 2020. Well, that's coming up in the next week or two. If you've got any questions about today's topic or any suggestions for future topics, and especially anything you'd like me to, uh, to add to a, a recording that will be coming up soon as to how to prepare ourselves for the year ahead, then I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment anywhere you hear or see this recording. Leave it publicly in the comment box below so that we can learn from you because we learn best when we are learning in community, as I've been talking about here today. If you know anybody might benefit, then pass the link on to them. And if you uh, haven't yet done so on YouTube, then please hit the notification button, the subscribe button, then you'll know about what's coming up next when, it, uh, when I record a new episode. And if you are listening to the podcast, why not give me a Christmas present this year that won't cost you any money? Just leave a review. Make that your Christmas present to Malcolm Cox. I'd be very grateful for that. And until the next time, I hope you have a wonderful week and a terrific Tuesday. Take care and God bless.